Hi friends, I'm Amy and this is A Star Reads and it's time for the game of Bookish Life. So this is my TBR game that I play bi-monthly. I used to play it every month. This year I needed a little more flexibility in my reading. So if you'd like to know all the rules or how I play this game and the way that it has changed, I've altered it over the years. I will link a video up here that I created in January that talks about all the rules and everything you need to know about my game. Whatever I end up picking for my TBR game today will actually work for May and June because I'm doing it bi-monthly. Another thing that I decided to do this year was try and get through as many of my physical TBR books as I possibly could. Now the way I wanted to do this, or one of the ways I wanted to do this, was by creating this physical TBR wheel, which has all the books on my physical TBR on this one wheel. It's over 400. There's a lot of books on there. And the idea was to pick two books every month from that list that I can incorporate into my TBR. Now it hasn't quite worked out the way I'd hoped it would because I don't always prioritize these particular books. But the main goal here is to keep these books that I have sitting on my shelves like in my mind so that when I go to pick something up I will know what books are there and waiting for me. So the last two that I spun from my wheel were The Ones Were Meant to Find by Joan He and this is a YA sci-fi that I have not yet read. So this is gonna be carried over into next month and hopefully I'll be able to get to it. I actually have it pretty high up on my what I need to read next month list. So let's hope I actually get to this one because it will work out for one of my challenges at least this month. And then the other one that I picked last month was The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. And again, another one that I really wanna to get to soon. It just didn't work its way into the books that I actually did end up reading in April. But I read really well, like April was a great reading month. I just was doing Aurelium, trying to catch up with Aurelium, had other things that I really wanted to get to. So it was really hard to get some of these extra books, some of these like pile of possibility sort of books on my TBR. So this is also gonna be carried over and I won't be spinning the wheel again until I get one of these two books finished. Now let's do a bit of a recap. What happened when I picked my books in March? And granted, I have all of March and all of April to finish these books. And if I don't finish them, for each book, I have to take a punishment. The first spin was a diversity spinner wheel and that one was an indigenous author. And for that one, I ended up choosing Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. Now I'm not finished with this one. But I will be. I have seven days left in the month and I'm very actively reading this one. I'm reading 45 pages a day. I've been staying on top of it. I will get this one done. And so I'm currently on page 175. That's where I'm at right at the moment and that's where I need to be by the end of today. This one will get done. I'm not taking a punishment for this one. <laughs> I'm determined to finish this book. My second spin was a book card and for that I chose a book that was unread from a previous TBR. And I ended up choosing The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan, the first book in the Percy and the Olympians series. And I read this, read it all the way through completely done with that. Spin number three was a genre spinner wheel and for that one I ended up landing on adult fantasy which was perfect because I really wanted to read Fool's Errand which is the first book in the Tawny Man trilogy. This is by Robin Hobb and I did read it. All 600 and something pages of it. Spin number four ended up getting stopped at the TBR game spot and for this one I ended up going with a readathon that was currently happening and that was Mel from a book fiend named Mel's Readathon, which was her roll of reads, which is a game that she used to do for her TBR. So when she rolled her rolls, I ended up picking a couple that I thought would be really good for my TBR game for these prompts. And for this particular prompt, she picked Thief, which is to read a book that has an unlawful or morally gray character in it. And I chose The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon because I knew that our main character, Paige, is doing unlawful things. Like within this world, her being a clairvoyant is unlawful. So I did end up finishing The Bone Season. I read it for Bookstar Readalongs and it was so much fun. Had a great time with this one. For spin number five, I was stuck at the TBR game spot. So I ended up using Mel's role of read prompts again. And for this one, she had a prompt that she picked that was cleric. And I decided to go with that one because it was a religion or mythology book. So, I was able to get Wicked Fox by Kat Cho on there, which is one of the books that I have picked from my TBR spinner wheel and just never got around to reading. So this is another one like Black Sun that I'm not completely finished with yet, but I am so close and I have seven days left that I will get this one done. I'm on page 310, I'm reading 20 pages a day and it's going very fast, this is a quick read. And spin number six was another diversity spinner wheel and I ended up landing on Europe or Australian representation. So for that one, I actually reread Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. And this is set in the UK and that's part of the European continent. So this was a perfect choice and it was so much fun to reread this. I did finish this. So that's it, that's all my books. I finished them, well, I almost finished them. I will have them done by the end of April. So I'm considering it a win. I'm not taking any punishments. I don't have to be 
on challenge mode. I can't wait to start May and June on such a good footing. Very rarely do I actually finish my TBR game, so <laughs> it just feels so good. It feels so good, even considering how big Fool's Errand was, like to be, I mean, there's a lot of big fantasies here and I did it. I have been having some really good reading lately. So let's check out my spin tallies. I've got four tallies each on nine and 10. So that's an area where I could be in a lot of trouble because I tend to land on nine and 10 a lot. And then I've got three tallies each on four, six and eight. And then I've got two tallies on one, three and seven. So basically I wanna get twos and fives cause I'm completely safe on twos and fives. Let's see where I'm gonna go with spin number one. See, <laughs> I, I land on nines and tens. Okay, so that's gonna add a spin. I normally do six spins. I'm gonna be doing seven spins this month. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna have to go one direction or the other. So we'll go one through five to go left, six through 10 to go right. And let's see which direction I'm gonna move. Once so I'm gonna go to the left, I'm going nine spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A random picture, that's kind of fun. So this one is also dependent on the genre. So if it's one, it's yellow, that is actually a middle grade. And I will use whatever picture I end up with to determine what middle grade book I'm gonna be picking up. So it's gotta influence my choice in some way. Spin number one, plus one spin, of course, starting out strong. <laughs> So for this prompt, it was pretty fun because I landed on random picture and because it had an orange square around it, I had to choose a middle grade book. So I went and pulled up a random picture generator because they have random generators for everything these days. And here's the picture that came up. Now this dog is a, called a poolie. They're, they're like these interesting dogs that have this like almost dreadlock style fur. These dogs originate from Hungary and they're shepherding sort of dogs. Apparently they have a lot of energy and you have to keep them very active because otherwise they'll probably get into a lot of trouble, but they're supposed to be very friendly and loyal type dogs. So I was like, wow, where do I go with this? How literal do I take this? And there really aren't that many books out there about pulley dogs. And so <laughs> what I did was I went and looked up books set in Hungary and I was looking specifically for a middle grade and I found this book called The Good Master by Kate Serity. This is a book that was written in 1935. So that'll be interesting because it's a much, much older book, but it was a Newbery Medal nominee and it's got really good reviews. So I'm curious to see what it's all about. So this is an historical middle grade about this young boy named Yanchi and his cousin, Kate. And Kate's from Budapest and she's coming to spend the summer with her cousin out in the country because he lives in the country on a farm. And it turns out that she's really headstrong and they have a much more adventurous summer than I think Yanshi expected it to be. It's set on a farm which is perfect for pulley dogs because they're herders and these kids have so much energy. They're so excited. They're getting into all kinds of trouble. I feel like that really fits the vibe of a pulley dog. Plus it's set in Hungary, which is where pulley dogs come from. Kate, the author was actually from Hungary. She was born in Hungary and she came to the United States in 1922. So I am excited to see what this is all about. And I'm glad that it's a really short <laughs> little middle grade book. Spin number two. Four. That gives me four tallies on four. It's still safe, but it could be in trouble. One, two, three, four. Most recently published, and this is based on the genre. So the genre for red is adult horror thriller mystery that was most recently published. That's a fun one. I like that one. All right, so spin number two was most recently published, which is always exciting because I don't read a lot of books that were recently published. And of course there was an orange square around that particular prompt, which meant that it had to be based on the genre that I had landed on, which was adult horror thriller or mystery which was also pretty cool because I don't read those very often either. So I went to my Goodreads, I sorted it by publication date, and then I kind of went through to see what was actually on my physical TBR because I would like to get through the books that are on my physical TBR. And I ended up coming up with You're Invited by Amanda Jayatisa. And this was very lucky because I recently got this from a little free library. I was very excited about reading it, but I just, I don't read thrillers as often as I would like to. So this is about a woman named Amaya and she has a best friend named Kavi who is getting married and she's invited to Kavi's wedding. The thing is, her and Kavi haven't spoken for a really long time. They were best friends, but then Kavi just kind of stopped talking to her. And when Amaya gets to the wedding, cause she's determined to go, 
she finds out that Kavi's marrying her ex-boyfriend. So huh. that's, I mean, probably one of the reasons why Kavi stopped talking to her. At one point, Kavi goes missing. She's presumed to be dead or something along those lines. And they're thinking that maybe Amaya did it, or at least people are pointing fingers. So I really like the idea of this. I think it'll be a lot of fun to read a vacation wedding thriller. It just sounds like a blast. Spin number three. That was a nice big one. Three, three is good. Woo I like three, okay. One, two, three, buy thrift book letter. Oh, that's fun, okay. So basically I need to buy a book at a thrift store, a used bookstore, and I need to use a letter generator to decide what first letter the book has to have. So that's a fun one. And I get a new book, or well, new to me at least. Spin number three was a super fun one because it's to buy thrifted books. So basically a used book, a book from a thrift store, a book from a used bookstore, anything that has been previously owned, previously read, works for this particular prompt. However, there was a little bit of a stipulation because it also had letter on there, which meant that I had to randomly generate a letter and the title of the book had to start with that letter. So that was a little difficult because as you'll see, I randomly generated R not as many books start with R as you would think. <laughs> it's not that easy. And of course, when I was at the thrift store, I was looking around thinking, I really want it to be a book that I've heard of or it's on my TBR so that I can read stuff that I really do want to read. Uh, yeah, and it was just, <laughs> it was tricky. And we were there for a little while looking around. There is one book that I really want to read that I've been wanting to read for a long time that technically starts with an R. It has the in front of it, but I'm not counting thes and they had it. And here's a little video clip that shows the book that I did end up choosing, and that is The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. I have not read anything yet by Ishiguro, but I do, for some reason, believe that this is an author that I'm going to really enjoy reading from. There's just not much happening, it seems, but this, I don't know, this for some reason is the kind of synopsis that will draw me in. And this story, I feel like, is probably somewhat of a slice of life sort of book, which I tend to really like those. And this is about an English butler who, it is post-war, I don't know how that comes into the story, but he has been working for this man named Lord Darlington for many years, most of his life. And as he's going on a drive through the country, I'm guessing, on vacation or something, he's reminiscing about his life. He's reminiscing about the purpose of his life. And the question is, has he worked for a great man? Has he worked for a man who, you know, makes him feel like he's accomplished his goals? And I think he starts really thinking about some of the more problematic elements of his relationship with Lord Darlington over the years where he's seen this man not be so great. He's gonna have to like reckon with, did I waste my life working for this man? That's what I get from this book. And that is like so exciting. <laughs> but that just sounds like a me sort of book. So I'm hoping that I love this book as much as I believe I'm gonna love it, and I can't wait to get to it. Spin number four. 10. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I was like excited and then all of a sudden not excited. Okay. Okay, that gives me an extra spit because I have four tallies on 10, so now I have five tallies. Of course I have an extra spin. So now I have eight spins this month. Of course I have eight spins. I'm always gonna land on nine and 10. And I said, oh, at first, because anytime I land on a 10, that means I get to do a secret TBR book. I almost forgot, even though I do a secret TBR book for this particular one because I landed on a 10, I still have to move forward 10 spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Spin number four. <laughs> Another extra spin. So yay, eight spins. <laughs> it's a good thing I do two months at a time because I, I don't know. But this one was a secret TBR book, so I'm not going to be telling you about it because I get to keep that a secret and hopefully get a secret TBR video out to you. My goal is with this prompt, I also get a secret TBR video out for you. And luckily the one book I picked is the only book that's gonna be in the vlog. So let's hope I can get the book read and the video done and out to you. Okay, let's see where we're gonna go for spin number five. Five, five is safe. Five is great. <laughs> I like five. One, two, three, four, five. Whenever I land on a five, it's a book card, so I need to pick a book card. Oh, that's 
fun. It's a mom pick. Oh, she's gonna love that. Spin number five. Amy pulled a book card <laughs> and the book card was mom pick. I get to pick. <laughs> so I've been reading a series. I think I read it in 21. It's called Veronica Speedwell is a series. The book is called A Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayborn. And I, I read the whole series because I really enjoyed it. It's a historical book. I would like to say romance, but you actually don't get into an, any romance until about the fifth book in the series. She's a scientist in the 1800s, which was really hard for women to have that kind of a job. They even have any kind of a job during that. So what I really liked about the book was it kind of explained what that period was like for women. And this woman was a really strong woman that got to do um, a lot of things. It was pretty exciting. There are murder mysteries, I think. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of murder going on in these. It's been a year or so since I read them, but I hope Amy likes them. Since she's a scientist, I thought she'd really like them. Spin number six. So far, things are looking pretty good. Oh wait, no, I have eight spins. What am I talking about? <laughs> spin number six, not my last spin. Nice little small spin, and it's another book card. Let's move before anything, because I don't want to forget. So I'm gonna to need to move five spaces, and if I spin one to five, I go left, six or 10, go right, nine. That means I'm gonna be going to the right, but I'm moving five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. This does not count, thank goodness, because there's a plus one there. <laughs> what counts is another book card. And it is, try a chapter and a coffee. Oh, okay. Spin number six. I ended up spinning the number five again. And that's great because it gives me a chance to get through some of my book card prompts. Because <laughs> every time I land on a five, I have to pick a book card. And this time around, the prompt I got was not actually for a book, which is kind of exciting. It was for another try a chapter and a coffee video, which I love doing. I've done two so far. If you haven't watched those, I will link them up here. I pick books on my physical TBR that I've had for a very long time or I've kind of lost interest in. I try a chapter while at a coffee shop that I maybe haven't been to before or haven't really got a chance to spend much time at. And sure, of course, B-roll footage of the coffee and talk about the coffee and the food there. And at the end of trying a chapter of all the books that I bring with me, I decide whether or not I wanna keep them or rehome them. And right after going to the coffee shop, I go directly to a little free library and I place the books that I don't wanna keep in that little free library. And it takes some of the books that I don't really wanna read off of my physical TBR because yeah, I've got 400 plus. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> <laughs> so I am looking forward to doing another round of this, and this just gives me all the more incentive. We are on spin number seven. I'm gonna spin the other direction so I can get something different. Ooh. Two, two is safe. I like twos. One, two. Diversity spinner wheel. So basically what happens here is I will spin the spinner wheel again, and whatever color it lands on, the corresponding color on here will give me the diversity representation that I need to use to determine the book that I'm gonna read. Let's see. Say one, orange, of course. So that one is disability rep, and this also works for mental health rep and neurodivergent characters or authors or what have you. Spin number seven was a diversity spinner wheel. These ones are always fun because then I just spin the wheel again and whatever color it lands on, that determines what diversity representation I do. So in this case, it ended up being disability rep, which also works for mental health and neurodivergence. And as I mentioned in previous videos, I've been loosely trying to participate in Autism Reads, which is a book club that my friend Christine from An Autistic Reader has started. And I've read the February book, which was Queens of Geek. And if you'd like to see what my review of that one is, I'll link it up here. And I have been holding on to the March book from the library <laughs> for a little while, but I need to get to it. And so these books all have some form of neurodivergence, some autism and in most cases, I think most of these books, the author has autism themselves. So we can read these books and have conversations in the Discord about the different representation. Now I have talked about this book before on my March TBR video. I still wanna read it. It's a really big book though. I didn't realize it was this big until I picked it up from the library. But this is On the Edge of Gone by Corinne Duivas. This is a YA sci-fi. I love sci-fi, not nearly enough sci-fi ends up in my life 
on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's time to read some sci-fi. This is about this young girl who does have autism. It's the end of the world in the sense that a comet is coming to hit the planet. And Denise and her family, her mother and her sister, I think, are trying to escape to this, like they don't actually get to be on a pod to leave the planet. They have shelters where they get to go hide out and hopefully survive through this comet. And Denise, our main character, is struggling because her sister has gone missing and they're supposed to be reporting to their shelter place, their temporary shelter. And in this situation, her mother is of no help because her mother's a substance abuser and is just looking out for herself. So Denise is really frustrated. In the process of searching for her sister, trying to get her family to this temporary shelter, she comes across this opportunity that would give them all a chance to leave the planet. But in order to be accepted on this ship, they all have to have some skill that will allow them to provide for this new community that they colonize once they go to a different world. And she's just not sure if she will be able to provide or will her mother, will her sister, will they all make it on this ship? Will they all make it off the planet? Who knows? So this does sound like it's gonna be thrilling and exciting and very interesting. And I can't wait to see what people think of this representation because yeah, I'm a bit behind, it's from March. So most people have already read it, but I don't think it matters if I read it in May or June, as long as I get it done so that I don't have to take a punishment. And finally, spin number eight. One. One is safe, one is good. One, little free library book. Oh, that's a fun one. So that means I'm gonna be going to a little free library somewhere and pick a book out of it. So that was spin number eight. That was my final one. Thank goodness I didn't land on anything else because I was getting a little nervous there. For this particular prompt, I landed on Little Free Library. And that's fun because then I get to go out to the Little Free Libraries and find a book that I want to read. I'll show you some clips of how hard it was for me to find a book. <laughs> I ended up going to four different little free libraries. The first one is a pretty popular one, but it was really empty for some reason, and I just didn't see anything I wanted. I hadn't been to before. I'd seen it. I've passed by this one many times and there were some interesting books in there, but I just didn't feel like any of those were ones I wanted to read. The third one really didn't have very much in there and I have gone to this one before. This is the one that I usually pass by that I got you're invited from. There was nothing in there that I wanted to read. So finally, I went to a fourth one. And I was so excited. I wish I had gotten a clip of it because when I saw this particular book, I like, <gasps> I jumped, I jumped really high and I was like so excited. And as you can see, that was The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. This book is a book I have wanted to read for such a long time. It's so loved. I haven't heard anybody talk about this middle grade and not love it. It's about this witch named Zan and the people in the neighboring village are afraid of witches. They're afraid of her. Every year they leave her a sacrifice so that she'll leave them alone of a baby. And Zan's actually a really nice person. She's a really nice witch. And she takes these babies and she gives them a new home in another village on the other side of the woods. People who will love the babies, who will take care of them, who wouldn't sacrifice them. So one year, the child who is sacrificed ends up accidentally eating moonlight. And because this child ate moonlight, they have all these magical powers that nobody else would really know how to deal with. So Zan decides to keep this child, raise her as her own, and she names her Luna because the moonlight. And that's where the story goes from. It sounds like it's gonna be so sweet and cute and wholesome. I can't wait to read this one. I'm looking forward to it. I hope it's one of the first books I get to because it just, it sounds like it's gonna make me feel so good. So that's it for my spins, but if you want more gameplay, I will be doing the viewer prompt a little bit later in this video and Magda's spins will be at the very end. So stick around or you can always jump forward. I always make sure that I timestamp each sections of these videos. So you don't have to watch the whole thing all the way through if you're only interested in the gameplay. However, right now I would like to tell you about my buddy reads and challenges and all the different things I'm doing within the month of May. So the first buddy read I wanna talk about is with Mary Jo Hedrick and she has a channel by the name Mary Jo Hedrick. I haven't had a chance to really interact with her as much as I would like. Like we've talked through comments, we've messaged each other through Instagram, but we haven't actually buddy read anything before. So I'm really excited to get this opportunity to really talk to her about books. And we have some similar taste when it comes to like classic and adult fiction and stuff like that. So I'm really looking forward to hearing what she thinks about 
The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. Now I have really loved almost everything I've read by John Steinbeck, but I've only read his shorter novels. I haven't read any of his big works. I think I started East of Eden when I was in high school or when I was young. I didn't end up finishing that one. So like I have it. I do want to read it at some point. And I've also really wanted to read Grapes of Wrath for a while. So this feels like the perfect time because I'm kind of in the mood for this sort of book. And I've always loved John Steinbeck's character development. I think he's just a master at creating amazing characters that are like everyday people, everyday Joes. And so this is during the Dust Bowl period, and this is about the Joads who lose their family farm and have to relocate to California, which was true for many of the families during the Dust Bowl period where their crops were failing because there was extreme drought, there was a lot of dust, things were in terrible conditions, they were making no money on their farms, so they had to move to better locations and a lot of them moved to California. And apparently this is really sad and tragic. There's a lot of moments in this that are really difficult for this family. And I'm looking forward to it because like I said, John Steinbeck always can take these everyday people and just create beautiful stories from them, beautiful characters that you really end up caring about. The second buddy read I'm doing is actually quite interesting because I had heard Amanda from The Reading and Writing Life talking about some buddy reads she's doing with Sandy from Miss Reads a lot. And then of course I've heard Sandy talk about them since then. But she was specifically talking about the books they'll be reading together this year that have a lot to do with eating healthier or exercising more, doing things like that. And one of the books they mentioned that I picked up recently is Fat Girls Hiking by Summer Michelle Skog. I'm probably saying that wrong. This book really interested me when I first picked it up because I have been a pretty serious hiker most of my life, until recently, until recently. But I was a pretty serious hiker. And I'll show you some pictures of some of the bigger hikes that I took. I attempted Mount Whitney. The only reason I didn't finish it was because I got really bad altitude sickness. The hike itself wasn't that hard. It was just that I got incredibly sick towards the top of the mountain. So it was very devastating for me that <laughs> I didn't finish that one because I was so well prepared for it. But my first really big hike, as you'll see here, was Half Dome which I loved that hike. It was incredible. And aside from those two bigger hikes, I've done many other smaller hikes. I used to hike all the time. And unfortunately, I have gained some weight over the years that has made hiking with other people more uncomfortable for me because I'm a pretty competitive person. And when I'm not even like I have to beat them, it's more like I just got to keep up. So even though it's harder on my body these days, I'm like, no, I got to be up there and I got to keep up. And I feel like it's sort of lessened my enjoyment of hiking. And that's a real big bummer because hiking has been one of my favorite activities for most of my life. And so I feel like I really could use the motivation and also reframing my mind when it comes to hiking, not thinking about it the way I used to think about it and having a more healthy relationship with my body and hiking. And so this book really did intrigue me. And there's also like an Instagram group of fat girls hiking where they're constantly posting pictures and doing little short videos and stuff like that. There are regional meetup groups where they have fat girl hiking events. And I'm like, Amy, you need to start working on this again, get back into doing something that you love so much. And I'm very excited to be able to read this and talk about it with Amanda and Sandy. We're going to be doing it over on Voxer. And they're just such wonderful people. I know that Sandy is a really avid hiker. So I can't wait to see what they have to say about this and just have conversations and maybe we'll just motivate each other. And then for Bookstar Read Alongs, which is a read along group that I host with Danielle from Bookcara and Paige from Pages with Paige, we are reading our next book in May. I'm very excited because we're reading The Mime Order by Samantha Shannon. This is the second Second book in the Bone Season series and I really enjoyed the first book. I'm so excited to continue on because these are fast paced, they're YA but I feel like there's a little more complexity to them. They're very interesting. We had some very mixed reviews when it came to our discussions and yet it was so fun to talk about this because there's a lot of different parts of this that people were confused about or they had different questions about. So this is like a really good series to buddy read and I can't wait to see where our story goes. The first book is not anything what I expected it to be because I had some idea of what direction it was going to go in based off the 0.5 prequel that we read, which was The Pale Dreamer. And it then just completely changed. It completely changed. But it's about this girl named Paige who is a clairvoyant. She's one of the clairvoyants of the higher order. And being a clairvoyant where she lives is completely illegal. You're not allowed to be a clairvoyant, let alone use your clairvoyancy for money making and stuff like that. And she's part of this group called The Syndicate, which sells their clairvoyant skills 
for money. That's how they survive. It's fascinating. I can't wait to see where it's gonna go. I loved the way the last book ended because there was a lot of possibilities, but we have no clue what's gonna happen next. So I'm ready for The Mime Order by Samantha Shannon. I will link the announcement video and our Discord link in the description box below. So go check it out, join us. We're always happy to have more people in our read-along group. We have a great group. We have a really great group and we always have differing opinions. So there's a lot of great conversations happening. Every month, I have a handful of challenges that I try to fulfill. I can't say that I'm super on top of these and that's okay. It just gives me a way to pick my TBR to kind of focus my TBR so I know what I want to get to first or where I want to focus my attention. Now the first one I always participate in is Buzzwordathon and this is hosted by Kayla from Books and Lala. This is a year long challenge. Every month there's a new prompt and for the month of May, the prompt is flavors, seasonings, or herbs. And I was a little worried about this one because that's a little challenging and I had a hard time last month with the emotions one. However, this ended up being really easy because I'm reading Grapes of Wrath and grape is a flavor. <laughs> it's a really good flavor. Actually, I like the fake grape flavor. I know a lot of people don't, but this is going to work well for my buzzwordathon, and I am getting to this because I am buddy reading it. The second challenge I want to talk about comes from Mel from Completely Melanie, and she does this challenge every month that's called TBR Knockout. Two prompts each month that help us get through our physical TBR as well as our ebooks or our audiobooks, anything that we actually own. And so for the month of May, the theme is Mother's Day, which is very exciting because it's all about mom. Mamas. And as you know, I'm very close to my mama. And so the very first prompt is read a book your mom would like. Now I was gonna use A Curious Beginning because she did a mom pick for me, but I don't actually own that. I'm getting it from the library. So what I'm gonna go with instead is I Married a Minotaur by Regine Abel. This is the fifth book in the Prime Mating Agency series, which is all monster smut, which I've been enjoying a lot. And this is a series that my mom initially read and loved, and so did my friend Shell. And because of them, I ended up deciding I would read it. I wasn't really planning on it, but it ended up working out for a prompt at one point. And I really enjoyed it. And this is definitely the types of stories my mom would enjoy. And yeah, yeah. it's nice and short and easy, and I own it on ebook, so let me just read it. The second prompt is to read a book that has a mom in it. And for this, I ended up going with The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill, because Zan takes on the role of a mother figure, and I think that works out perfectly, because there are all different types of families and different relationships between people, and I think that this is a great representation of a mother-daughter relationship. Next, there's another challenge that I've been doing this year called Genre-a-thon, and this is hosted by Whitney from Tibera's Den. It's a way to get different types types of genres into your TBR each month that you maybe necessarily don't sneak on there very often. So for May, the theme is YA May. And granted, Whitney did say, yes, I know that YA is an age range, not necessarily a genre, but we tend to read it like it's a genre. A lot of times we read YA as a thing and middle grade as a thing, even though there are definitely different genres within YA. So I think it works and who cares, right? I do read a lot of YA, but what I thought I would go with was a YA that I've been nervous about and that I would like to pick up, but I also am afraid I'm not gonna like it. And that is The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan Heath. A book that a lot of people had very negative reviews about or mixed reviews. And so I'm looking forward to seeing what I feel about this. I tend to have interesting taste, so maybe I will really enjoy it. Either way, this is a little more out of my comfort zone than say other YAs are because I tend to read a lot of YA. Then my goal for my monthly scratch board is to scratch off one book a month. I have a few that I have finished that I haven't scratched off yet. So in an upcoming vlog, I will definitely try and scratch off some of the ones that I have completed. And one of the books that's on here that I am reading this month is, Let's see if you can see it. Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. It's kind of in a weird position, so it's hard to show you, but Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. I will be reading that this month. It's another one that I'll be able to scratch off. So I'm really actually doing pretty good with this. I'm not completely on top of it, but I'm impressed with my <laughs> ability to get through some of these. Next challenge. There are a lot of them. <laughs> So let's talk about a really a magical readathon. There is the journey to Aldea, which I've been trying to do every single month. As you'll see right there, I've got my journey going. So in April, we had spring equinox and we didn't have to worry about adding on to this journey because we were at Aurelium. So for the month of May, we're gonna have two choices. One is to stay at Aurelium and the other is to travel to Carador. So to stay at Aurelium, you had to finish a book that ends on an even number. And then to travel to Carador, it was a book that ended on an odd number. So what I decided to do was to pick a book that I know I have to read in the month of May and use that to decide which direction I'm gonna go. So I chose The Mime Order for Bookstara because I have to read it in the month of May. And what I did was I looked at the last page 
page of this book, which was 501. I'll show you. I don't want to look at any spoilers, but can you see it? I think so. It's an odd number, which means that I'm traveling to Carador. And then finally, another goal that I had for 2023 was to read more gifted books. Now, I didn't get as many gifted books on my TBR as I would have liked. The My Mortar was gifted from Paige, from Page of the Page. So thank you so much, Paige. I can't wait to get to this one. You know I'm excited. I should also point out that the secret TBR book that I'm reading for spin number four was also gifted. So thank you to this anonymous gifter. Well, they're not anonymous to me, but thank you to the gifter that you don't know about. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, that's obviously enough buddy reads and challenges. I am trying to loosely participate in a couple of readathons in the month of May, but I'm gonna talk to you about that a little bit after we find out what happens in the next part of your journey through the game of a bookish life. And so let's go check out that viewer prompt. All right, now it's time for the viewer prompt and your last spin landed you on book card up here. So you've made it pretty far on the board. I can't wait to see how much further you're gonna go and where you're gonna end up today for the viewer spin. Four. One, two, three, four. Buy a thrift book. Letter. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. That is an interesting one. I'm going to figure out how I can make this work. Okay, so that was kind of fun because I got the same prompt for my third spin. So we ended up on the same thing. I don't know how that happens, but it does. And I'm excited we're doing the same prompt at this point. However, I randomly generated a different letter for you. And so if you'll see, the letter I generated was K. K. So your book needs to start with the letter K, like the title needs to start with the letter K. Now this is kind of tricky. So I wanted to give you three options. Here are your three options. Hopefully one of them works. And of course, if these don't work, then just do something else. And that's totally fine because <laughs> this is up to you. It's just extra fun if you'd like it. So first option, buy a thrifted book that starts with the letter K. It has to be the title, not necessarily the author. Although, you know, you could always do whatever you want. Like I have no qualms with you getting to choose what you want to do. This is your TBR. Choice number two, go to a little free library and find a book that starts with K. Then you don't have to buy anything and it gives you a chance to check out some of the little free libraries in your area. Just make sure you bring a book with you so you can replace it. And hopefully you'll find a book that starts with the letter K. It, it would be a bit of a challenge, but it might be a nice day out. Wander around to a few little free libraries. The third option is of course, to look at your own shelves and see if you have any books that are used or bought from thrift stores, or maybe you got it for free for some reason that starts with the letter K. And so that way you can just shop from your own shelves and hopefully you have something that works. It doesn't have to be used. I think it's just fun because it works with the intention of this prompt. But let me know in the comment section down below what you end up doing. If you end up doing the prompt in one of these ways or if you end up doing something different, I'd love to hear what book you're gonna be reading for the month of May that starts with the letter K. Okay, so let's talk about the readathons I'm loosely participating in the month of May. I don't know what I'm actually gonna get accomplished in May because May is the last month of my term before summer break. So obviously I have a lot going on. However, I have books on my TBR, things that I wanna get to that I think will work for both of these readathons. The first one is May of the Moderns and this is hosted by Margaret Pernard. She's a wonderful booktuber and author and she's a very thoughtful booktuber. She thinks a lot about the content she puts on her channel. So the intention behind May of the Moderns is to read books from I think 1901 to 1945 that were written and published in 1901 to 1945. And I have always wanted to participate in this readathon a bit more because I do like classics. I do like modern fiction. May is just a rough month for me because of school. However, I am reading two books that are modern fiction books. So the first book I'm going to be reading is Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck because this was written in 1939 definitely works within the time period. I'm looking forward to seeing if his longer novels are as successful for me as his shorter books have been, because I do like to say that John Steinbeck's one of my more favored classic authors, but I don't feel like I've read enough to be able to say that definitively. So I really do need to be able to read some more of his bigger, more popular works and say yes or no, <laughs> you know, like I have to figure this out. And this works out for the prompt of May of Moderns to read a book off of your physical TBR. Now I'm not gonna be fulfilling all the prompts, because I'm only reading two books for this readathon, but I figured if they end up fulfilling the prompts, that's great too. The second book that works for this is The Good Master by Kate Sarity, because this one was published in 1935. It's a middle grade. I'm gonna use it for the prompt genre fiction because it's classified as historical fiction. It's also a middle grade book, a children's book. Now granted, that's not a specific type of genre, but I think it makes it unique enough from regular fiction that I'm gonna count it for this genre fiction prompt. 
The other readathon that I would like to participate in is one that I just recently was like, oh, no, I do want to at least try reading for this one because it's Misery May. And this one's hosted by Scott from Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. And it's also hosted by Jem from Gem of Books, but I found the readathon through Scott. And, you know, it might seem strange that I'm very excited to add this readathon <laughs> onto my May reading. However, I do like sad books. I like tragic stories. I love dynamic characters. And if that means they go from doing pretty well to doing really terrible, I like that. I like stories that have highs and lows. And I like stories that really make me think. And a lot of times I get more of that from really tragic stories. <laughs> The other reason I got really excited about this readathon is because recently Scott put out a video called Reviewing Every Thomas Hardy Novel. And I've only read Tess of the Durbervilles by Thomas Hardy. I know that gets mixed reviews from people, but I really enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed it. There was just so much about it that felt like the type of writing that I enjoy. And so watching Scott's review of all these different Thomas Hardy books got me very excited to read more. And hopefully I will enjoy them as much, if not more, than I enjoyed Tess of the Durbervilles. So we'll see, we'll see. But my goal is to read two Thomas Hardy books for this particular readathon. I was able to find both of these books on Scribd, and hopefully that works for me because audiobooks are not always the best choices. <laughs> so we'll see, because my audiobook listening is really the only place where I have a lot of flexibility, and I tend to do a lot of mood reading through my audiobooks. Grapes of Wrath is also supposed to be a pretty miserable book. You know, there's some pretty sad things that happen to people in this story. And so I think this also works for Misery May. I just won't know until I actually read it. So for the two Thomas Hardy books that I'm planning on listening to in the month of May, hopefully, the first one is Under the Greenwood Tree. And now this one is not supposed to be quite as miserable as other Thomas Hardy books, but it's a shorter one. So I figured that worked out really well for having a lot of things to do in May and you know, the other one's a longer one. So I'm probably gonna spend most of the month listening to the other one. And this one is about a romantic relationship between a church musician named Dick Dewey and a school mistress named Fancy Day. So I don't know too much about this. It's a Victorian era book about romance, but maybe there's some difficult parts of the romance. It says that it is his most gentle and pastoral novels. Now I really like pastoral novels. I've actually found that of the pastoral type stories I have read, I've enjoyed all of them. The second one actually fulfills the idea of Misery May, because this is what Scott actually says is Thomas Hardy's most miserable book, which I'm so excited about. I can't wait to see how miserable is miserable. And that is Jude the Obscure. And the short synopsis of this is about this man named Jude Folly who wants to become university educated. He wants to go to school. He's so excited about it. And then he gets trapped into a marriage by this woman named Arabella who later leaves him. So that's pretty sad already. <laughs> but I imagine it gets a lot more sad and I shouldn't laugh, but I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to seeing how miserable this actually is and hopefully enjoying it just as much as I enjoyed Tess of the Durbervilles. If you've read any of these books, let me know in the comment section down below what you thought. Did you enjoy any of them? Are you worried for me? <laughs> Do you think it's gonna go poorly? I think it's gonna be a good one. I think everything is gonna go well. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see what happens if I read these books, if I read any of them. Who knows? Maybe May will be a no reading month. <laughs> let's hope that's not true. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. Okay, so let's talk about Magda's tallies. She's in trouble if she lands on an eight, a nine, or a 10, because she has four tallies each on those. Then she's got three tallies on number five, two tallies each on four, six, and seven, one tally on one and two, and the only spot she has zero tallies on is three. So let's hope she gets a whole bunch of threes. <laughs> I have a feeling she's not gonna be safe this round. So Magda normally does five spins. When last she played, she ended up here on this green spot and had to pick from a koi cup. So let's see how far she's gonna go during this round. Let's go with spin number one. Seven. Seven is safe. One, two, because this is a stop sign, she has to stop here and pick a book about love, romance, or a prominent relationship. So as long as the book has some form of love, romance, or relationship in it, that will work for that prompt. Now, since we're at this stop sign, she does run the risk of getting stopped there again if we land on a one or a 10. So fingers crossed, we can just keep moving along. Spin number two. Six is safe. One, two, three, four, five, six. Buy a new book genre. Okay, so this is purple. Ooh, that's classics. That's not. 
<laughs> I know classics aren't your style of choice, but let's just go with classic for this particular prompt. Spin number three. Oh, that's an extra prompt. <laughs> I mean, you knew we would land on an eight, nine, or 10, right? <laughs> Plus one. We're up to six spins now. Let's see how far that's gonna get us. One, two, three, four, five. We're stuck at our TBR game. So the way this one works is that Magda will have to go to another booktuber's TBR game and she can pick one of the props from their TBR game. So it could obviously be from someone who just put out a TBR game for the month of May, but it also could be from a previous month. Just can't be my game. Let's see if we're gonna pass that stop sign. Spin number four. Yes, we're passing it. <laughs> That gives you four tallies on number five though, Magda. And we're getting a little uncomfortable here. One, two, three, four, five. Cover, color, spin. That's a fun one. So how this is gonna work is I'm gonna spin the wheel again and whatever color it lands on, the book has to have that color on the cover. Now here's the tricky bit. This has an orange box around it, which means that it's based on the genre that we originally land on. So this is dark red and dark red is adult sci-fi. So whatever color I spin now, you have to find a book with that color on the cover that is an adult sci-fi. Let's see what color we're gonna land on. Light green. Okay, so now you need to find an adult sci-fi that has light green on the cover, Magda. Okay, so we moved a little bit, but let's see, we're gonna go for spin number five. One. One is safe. Oh no. <laughs> one. <laughs> okay, so stock card and physical TBR wheel. Who this has a chance of adding anywhere from one to four books onto your TBR Magda. So let's first pull a stock card. So these are the stock cards. I have four of them. They have one through four. I'm going to shuffle them, pick one, and whatever number is on there is the number of books we're adding to your TBR. Pooey. You know what's funny is, I don't think I've ever landed on stock card, Magda. This is all you. Let's go with this one, kind of like it's hiding a little bit. Two, okay, that's not bad, two. We're adding plus two. <laughs> okay, it's still plus two. <laughs> okay, we're adding two books to your TBR, Magda. Now, I'm gonna use my physical TBR wheel, which is a book that has all the books on my physical TBR on it, and we'll see what we end up with. Hopefully it's something that you can get your hands on or haven't already read, Magda. Okay, so the first book that came up was Anne of Green Gables, which Magda has read, loved, gave it five stars. And so obviously I had to re-spin and I ended up with Time Enough for Love by Robert Heinlein. And this is a old sci-fi. Magda, I'm not sure if you've read a ton of really old sci-fi like this or if you have any interest in it. So it's about this man named Lazarus Long who lives from 1916 through 4272. And it says he's a man who loves life so much that he didn't want to stop living it. And he loves time so much that he ended up being his own ancestor. So I don't really know what it means, but obviously he's lived through many different time periods or he does time travel. I have no clue. Let's go for spin number six. Three. Three's good. Keep landing on those threes. One, two, three. Diversity spinner wheel, so I'm gonna spin the wheel again and we'll see what color it lands on. That is dark orange. And dark orange is South American representation. So any kind of representation from a country in South America. So whether that's written by an author from a South American country, set in one of the South American countries, or has a main character that's living in or from one of the South American countries. Spin number seven. Three again. Three is still good. We're good on three. Oh, I forgot to do a book card for Magda when we landed on five. That's okay, we're gonna stick with what we had already. I keep forgetting fives and tens. <laughs> fives and tens are special. But in this particular instance, Magda always lands on book card anyways. So for me, it was meant to help me get more book cards, but I think we're okay with just leaving it as it is. So let's move Magda forward three spaces. One, two, three. NPR challenge based on the genre. So we landed on dark orange. That is adult fiction. So I call this space NPR challenge, even though I get the term challenge 
from Amanda from The Reading and Writing Life because she had created this challenge for herself to get through as many of these NPR recommended books as possible. So there's actually a page on the NPR website called Books We Love and these are all books that have been recommended by NPR employees and different people who are part of the NPR group. So what I did was I looked at the current year, 2022, and I was looking at the different books that are on here that I know to be adult fiction, either contemporary, historical, or literary. And I was kind of going through the ones that I'm most interested in because it's hard to say. Magda and I sometimes have very similar tastes, but then sometimes we don't. So the first one is The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell. This is an historical fiction, and this is about the marriage between Lucretia de' Medici and Alfonso II. So I have heard such wonderful things about this. I have heard some people didn't love it as much, but I have a feeling I'm going to love this, and I do really like historical fiction, and I really have been wanting to try Maggie O'Farrell's writing. I would like to read Hamnet at some point, because I also believe that's going to be another one I love, and just haven't got around to it. So if if you're interested in any historical fiction this month, Magda, this is a good choice. Another one I've been hearing a lot about lately is Take My Hand by Dolan Perkins Valdez. And this is a book about this woman in the 1970s. She's a black nurse from Montgomery, Alabama. And this story has a lot to do with racism, but I think it also has a lot to do with the bad things that happen in medicine because of racism, because of a unjust system. And this is a subject that has always interested me and it's getting such good reviews that I feel like this is one that I would enjoy. So Take My Hand by Dolan Perkins Valdez. This is also historical fiction. Then there's this book, Ginkgo, Where's Your Husband? I ended up picking this one up during my challenge over Christmas. This one, I've heard there's romance to it, but I think it's actually more chiclet and about finding yourself. And that tends to work under contemporary. So I would recommend this one. It's one that I really want to get to. And it sounds like it would be a fun read. And then the last one I'm going to mention here is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus because I did get this one also during my Christmas challenge. I'm excited about this one. Another historical fiction. This is about a woman who is a chemist in the 1950s. And of course, because this is the 1950s, she's treated horribly. She's belittled. The only place where she's able to find success is on a TV cooking show. But of course, there's a lot of chemistry that's used in cooking. So I think that that is where she's able to show her expertise. And it sounds really good. And this one has has gotten a lot of love. I know some people have said it's overrated, but I'm excited about it. I really do want to read this one because I'm a scientist and I just think I'm going to enjoy it. So those are the four options for this. There's a lot more on here that I would be super interested in reading, but I just don't know if you'd be interested in these, Magda. If you're not interested in any of these four, go to the NPR website, check out all the books that are available and try to find one that's an adult fiction. All right, we might be on our final spin, spin number eight. What I'm gonna do is I'm first gonna spin to see how far Magda has to go, and then I'll spin to see which direction she's gonna go. So let's spin to see how far she'll move. Four, four safe. Now, I will spin again, and if I land on a one through a five, she'll be going to the left. Six through 10 means she goes to the right. Seven, going to the right, four spaces. One, two, three, four. What are they reading? Ooh, this is always fun. Here's my jar with a whole bunch of booktubers in it. Woohoo! I'm gonna pick one of these booktubers' names out and Magda has to choose one of their favorite books. Let's go with this one. Oh, Steph Loves. Okay, so Magda, you need to go check out Steph Loves' channel. I will link it down below. I know she has videos where she talks about her best of books. And take a look at some of the books she has absolutely loved and see which one you'd like to read. Okay, so that's it for this video. Magda's gonna come back and she will comment in the comment section down below. Let us know all the books she chooses for her TBR this month. And I will pin that comment. So come back, check it out. See what she's gonna be reading. Thank you so much. See you later.